Buenos dias everyone, we are back in Monterey. It feels great to be back in this beautiful city in northern Mexico. It's one of the biggest cities in Mexico. There's a lot of reasons why we keep coming back. In our last Monterey video, we checked out some of the most popular spots in Monterey, like Parque Fundadora, Barrio Antiguo. But in this video, we're gonna focus more on the surrounding areas of Monterey, like a Pueblo Mexico, a waterfall, and also the richest municipality in all of Mexico. So come along with us. We are starting out here in Macro Plaza, and this is the largest plaza in Mexico. It's a great place to sort of start your adventure out in Monterey. Not only does it have some beautiful scenery, some art exhibitions, some beautiful architecture, and it's really conveniently located. It's a very central location. It's also a cool place to come get a massage. Right behind me where I just walked through, they're giving like massages right here on the sidewalks. Something amusing to me about Mexico is that even in warm degree weather, you'll see most people are wearing hoodies if it's below like 80. Right now it's about 71. There's a high of 77 today. And 90% of people, myself included, have like a hoodie on or a light jacket of some kind or at least a sweater. Me and Lauren are really fitting in without even realizing it. I guess we've been in Mexico long enough now. I got a jacket on. Long sleeve, pants. <laughs> pants. When we first came to Mexico, we were like flip flops, tank tops and all that stuff. If you're not at, at a beach destination, you really don't want to do that. You're going to stand out like a sore thumb. Pause and take a picture for optional I Spy game. We are going to head to a popular waterfall. It's about 30 minutes outside of the city, um, outside of a little Pueblo Mexico called Santiago. Okay, so we came to Central de Autobuses um, in the industrial section. It's like the main bus station in Monterey. And using this company, AAA, we got tickets to Santiago for 30 pesos a person. All right, so we made it to Santiago. We got dropped off here in the Plaza El Cercado. And there are some mini buses waiting on the front. They do say that they take you to the waterfall. We've arrived at the waterfall and we took the bus from the Plaza El Cercado. And it was a curvy mountain road on the way up here with beautiful views. And it only cost 50 pesos for both of us. Gracias. Buen día. We paid our entrance fee to the waterfall. It was 40 pesos a person. And this waterfall is called Cola de Caballo, which means in English, Horsetail Falls. It's only a short walk to the waterfall, so we're headed there now. The scenery out here is just amazing, and the drive here from Monterey was incredible. Lots of switchbacks and a windy mountain road, but the scenery and little towns clinging to the sides. And the water out here is crystal clear. And as you can see, they have a lot of touristy options, like they have zip lining out here. I think they have bungee jumping. They have like an obstacle course. You can get a horse ride up. Uh, we're just here for the falls, but they do have a lot of things you could do if you wanted to spend some more time here. It's just crazy that from a bus station in Monterey, you can come out here and just be surrounded by all these mountains and nature. Even more bathrooms we're passing now. There's so many nice bathrooms out here that are free to use once you pay to get in. It's uh, very, very green. I could get used to this place. This is beautiful. Just a little bit of information about the waterfall itself. It's 27 meters tall, which is like approximately 88 feet. So it's a pretty tall waterfall and I can see why the name translates to Horsetail Falls. It kind of does look like a horse's tail. Just the fact that this is only 30 some minutes outside of Monterey is insane. If you'll notice here behind me, there's like a crack or like a pocket in the waterfall where water is falling into. And it actually kind of looks like the face of a big giant. Up there is his eyes, nose, and the water's just kind of falling into his mouth. So we stopped off in this restaurant um, called Tiki Loco to grab a beer because we're waiting on the next bus to come through. All right guys, so that restaurant we stopped at for a beer, we actually didn't know when the next bus was coming down to take us back to El Cercado. So a waiter there at the restaurant offered to take us back down. We just paid him um, gas money and some extra. We paid him 120 pesos to give us a ride back down here instead of waiting on the next bus. Hasta luego. We're gonna go to over to Santiago, like the city center, and check out the Iglesia and stuff, and see the rest of the reasons why this place is a Pueblo Mexico. 
If you've been following us for a while, you probably know that we love to visit these Pueblo Magicos. But if you're new here, I'll give you a quick explanation of what these are. It translates to Magic Town, and basically Mexico's tourism board has sort of designated certain towns throughout the country that don't get enough tourist attention or historically have not gotten enough. They designate them as special, either historically, culinary, culturally, something to do with nature, natural beauty, arts. So there's always a great reason why something is given the designation Pueblo Magico. You really should visit as many as you can if you get the opportunity because they have never let us down. We've always loved every Pueblo Magico. We can always see why they've been given that designation. We took a taxi from the city center of Santiago right outside of town to this Malacan and public access area for this lake called Presa La Boca. Very, very beautiful. It's surrounded by mountains. But right now the water levels are extremely low as you can see. It has like restaurants, you can get horseback riding. On the other side some beaches, several little resorts dusted here and there. I mean who would guess this right here is hidden in northeastern Mexico. It's like a little taste of the of Hawaii or the Caribbean. Now obviously right now the water is not super beautiful. A lot of this is very dried up. But still just the surrounding mountains and scenery here is just unbeatable. What do you think Lauren? Yes. I love Santiago. I'm so glad we came here. It's such an easy trip from Monterey that you cannot miss it when you're here. Right, we are walking on this pedestrian street here. We're on the way to a very special market. It's one of the last of its kind here in Monterey. This pedestrian street is really, really nice. We featured it in our last video. You can pretty much do anything from get a tattoo here, clothes shopping, get a haircut. There's lots of those type of places. Get your shoes cleaned, listen to live music. There's lots of food stalls. It's true that Monterey is mostly getting business tourists people that are here for business and they're here to see the sites and stuff like that. But I think that's gonna start changing. I think it's a very underrated place to visit and you really shouldn't miss out on it. Yes, it's definitely different than many of the cities that you might be used to down south in Mexico. They're more colonial, historical, things like that. But this city is more modern, industrial, but it does have a lot of beauty surrounding. It's one of the most beautiful areas in all of Mexico as far as like the enormous mountains just surrounding the city. And you do have a bit of that colonial atmosphere and colorful buildings and things like that. Like for instance, in Barrio Antiguo, that's the city's old neighborhood so you'll see some of that colonial architecture you'll see the colorful buildings it also has lots of art lots of cafes and that's also where most of the backpackers and uh, tourists go and there's a lot of nightlife over there so there is actually a lot more than meets the eye in this city it definitely is very different than other cities you'll visit in mexico but that doesn't make it any less worth visiting in my opinion especially when you if you're into the outdoors rock climbing hiking things like that this city is really one of the best destinations you can come to we're here at Mercado Juarez. This is a market that we missed last time we were in Monterey. There are a lot of markets here in the city, but this one is beloved by all the locals. They actually refer to it as El Corazón de Monterrey, which is the heart of Monterrey. It has over a century worth of history here. It was founded in 1909, and then in um, the early 1990s, they demolished it and completely renovated it. Also, um, it's known to have an insane food scene inside, and we're really hungry. So right behind me is El Pipiri Pau. Probably saying that wrong, but it's a famous restaurant for Cabrito here in Mercado Juarez on the second floor. Now we tried Cabrito when we were here the first time. Uh, we weren't the biggest fans of it, but it was an interesting experience. But basically Cabrito is baby goat meat. They eat the goats younger because of the flavor and the tenderness. Now honestly, a lot of people say, oh, that's barbaric. And yeah, I can see where they're coming from. It does sound barbaric, but it's really not any different than eating like barbecue or veal, especially veal. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Here in Northern Mexico, like this state, uh, Tamaulipas, Wahilia, a lot of these states, they raise the goats there. And it's a big, big family tradition of uh, like a celebration type meal. Now we ate last time at a place that is more touristy and it was a lot more expensive. Uh, but today 
I don't know. I don't think we're going to have any Cabrito. We tried it last time. I wasn't that big on it. Yeah, I mean, we don't have anything to celebrate. Yeah, we don't have anything to celebrate at the moment. <laughs> so. All right, who are we kidding, guys? We're going to eat some Cabrito. How can we talk crap if we haven't even tried what's considered some of the best? So we're going to try it again. I got the Tacos de Cabritos, and Lauren got the Chilaquiles. Yep. And if you're not familiar with Chilaquiles, it's one of our favorite breakfasts anywhere. Um, it's very heavy breakfast, but it's rumored to cure hangovers. It's basically just tortillas simmered in salsa until they kind of get um, soft. A form of it dates back to the Aztecs, but it's obviously been changed a lot. And I think the Spanish came and influenced different versions of it. So the history of it is sort of cloudy, but it, it is believed to date back thousands of years in Mexico. So that's a really cool part about it. Yeah, and just to add, like a lot of really great dishes that we've tried in Mexico have been regional, but we've had um, chilequiles in a lot of different states in Mexico. Yeah. Oh, okay, gracias. Gracias. All right, so the tacos de cabrito, it came with like five little tacos. It's served with some lettuce, tomato, onion. So we'll see how this goes. Mmm, it's not even seasoned very heavily because it's already so flavorful. Gracias. Really good. Probably some of the best I've had. Yeah, that is phenomenal. It's got a bit of a kick to it. It's a little spicy. Sauce on top, sour cream. Is that sour cream or some kind of? I think it's like queso. Yeah, that mm. is delicious, you guys. And the cabrito tacos. I take back everything I said about Cabrito. It's actually really, really, really good here. Yeah, and I guess in the taco form, they're just like easier to eat and they taste more like what you could get like as street food, but mm -hmm. it's more of like a delicacy in a taco. Mm -hmm. The tacos de Cabritos, it's actually more like taquitos. They're little tiny tacos, but there's five of them. And that was only 151 pesos, which sounds like a lot until you realize that, you know, Cabrito is an expensive dish. So that's actually a really good deal. And the chilaquiles is so much food. I think this was less than 100 pesos. It was 75 pesos without the egg. And I think with the egg, it was still less than 100 pesos. All total here, it's a little over $10 counting the drinks, maybe about $12, $13 counting the drink. We are stuffed. So big apology to our vegetarian audience. We did it again with the Cabrito. It was not very crowded when we came, but we noticed they're really getting ready for the big crowds now. It's just after lunchtime right now. And in Mexico, uh, a lot of times they eat a lot later, especially something like Cabrito. You'll notice in Mexico and most Latin American countries, you'll see a lot of people eating late. I think that goes for lunch, but especially goes for dinner. I love that this market has an old glass elevator and we're gonna go see if we can ride on it. Um, I guess we're gonna do it. Okay, so it turns out just anybody can ride the old elevator, which is awesome. The view of the old market is so cool. I absolutely love it. But the cool thing about this is too, is now we have an amazing view of the city. Now today is the smoggiest day we've been here yet. And we spent a lot of time in Monterey. We've never seen this much smog. Honestly, the view kind of sucks today, but on a clearer day, definitely come to the market and ride the elevator up to the parking deck for these views. We always see the really nice Metro running through Monterey, but we've never used it before. So we're actually gonna go today and take it as public transportation and see what it's like. All right, what'd you think? That was nice, really nice ride. Um, very clean metro here. I love it. The views are phenomenal like everywhere else in Monterey. Yeah, and it was really smooth too. But yeah, the metro is pretty nice here. They call it Metro Ray. Really, really affordable. It's only four, 50 pesos per ride. If you combine rides and do the deals, you can save a ton of money and it's actually even cheaper than that. Paseo Santa Lucia, definitely one of my favorite parts of the city because there's so much to do in this area. Not only does it go all the way through Parque Fundidora, but it has lots of restaurants on the side, lots of cafes, lots of art. You got world-class museums right here along the river wall. Definitely lots of points of interest and things to do. Yeah, I would even go as far as to say this part of the city is very futuristic, even with the old industrialization turned into art. And then this crystal clear river, beautiful wide open sidewalks. It reminds me of something like that the crew of Star Trek would be beaming down to on some planet hundreds of years into the future. Future. This museum behind me is dedicated to the city's like industrial history. It's like a science, steel, and technology museum now. It's literally located in an old blast furnace. This is really, really amazing. I did not expect it to be this high up, but we are up here in this old blast furnace and the elevator we took up was all original. It was amazing. It felt like you're going straight up, although it is a bit of an angle. 
This has to be the coolest part of visiting Museo del Acero. It's a steel museum, but it's a lot more than that. It's kind of like technological and more innovative. The museum part of it is very interactive and there's tons of like games. But for us, the funnest part was taking that elevator up to the top of the steelworks. And then when you get on the top, you have phenomenal 360 views of Monterey. And just for anybody interested, if you want to come to this museum, the tickets are 150 pesos per person um, and that includes like all access to the museum and the elevator ride up to the top. Barrio Antiguo is awesome at night. There's lots of live music venues, cafes, restaurants, rooftop dining. Everyone just kind of comes over here at night. Uh, I love it because there's like rock music clubs and stuff like that. Rock music is still really popular here in Monterey. Delaware. Delaware. Okay, oh, I've been there. Cool. It's nice. Yes, muy, muy bonito estado. We just got a gordita con frijoles and huevo, which is this like pocket of tortilla that has eggs and beans inside of it. It looks really good. Mm. It's so good. <laughs> We are here in San Pedro Garza Garcia. It is a city on the outskirts of Monterey, but it's basically just a suburb of Monterey. And it is the wealthiest municipality in Mexico. Some say it's even the wealthiest in Latin America. There's a ton of skyscrapers, luxury shopping malls, beautiful green spaces, and it's insanely different from downtown Monterey and just the surrounding area of the Centro. San Pedro Garza Garcia is home to the tallest skyscraper in Mexico it's right behind me and it is 280 meters tall the contrast here in San Pedro Garza Garcia is kind of uh, crazy to see because you have all of this wealth all of these skyscrapers all of these headquarters and then nestled in the hills are these compact barrios overlooking all of these skyscrapers in this wealthy part of the area This is Parque La Huasteca, and we had to come see this place for ourselves because as you can see, just surrounding me are massive limestone rock formations, beautiful, beautiful mountains in every direction. And this is right in the city. Like we couldn't believe it until we pulled up and just saw it for ourselves. It is gorgeous out here. I read that they're still currently like marking trails out here and everything. So it's not extremely touristy yet. It's free to get in as well. It's closest to San Pedro Garza Garcia along with another park that's really popular which is the Chipinque Ecologica. We got some runaway donkeys down here, some donkey fugitives. I think Monterey has to be the best big city in Mexico for hiking. I mean, the amount of hiking options here is incomprehensible. Right now we're at Chipinque and this place is so lush and green and beautiful. We paid 60 pesos a person to get in, which isn't bad at all. And then right here, if you can see, we're looking out at Cerro de la Silla, which is Saddle Mountain. And that's another great hike in the city that a lot of people recommend. You can get all of this for a really good price. Now by Mexican standards, it's more expensive because this is one of the richest areas in all of Mexico. 
So you do pay a bit more for a lot of the things, but I think for the price, it's still way, way more affordable than any city in the USA. Like we can stay right in the heart of downtown Monterey, usually for about 30 to $50 a night. And that's a pretty nice place to stay. You could, you could probably go a lot more affordable than that. And you could definitely spend a lot more than that if you wanted something luxury, but that's sort of a middle ground. You can expect to pay around $40 a night if you're just here on a vacation and you're not booking a monthly accommodation. Definitely, it's very affordable for what you get here. All right guys, that's all we have for today's Monterey video. If you haven't watched the first one, make sure you go check that one out and subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Yep. Till next time, guys. That's the way go.